Deutsch oder Englisch? Deutsch? Okay. Ich mach. Usually it gets a mix of von allem anyway, so von das. <laughs> okay. Um, I forgot why I'm here. Wait. Ah, I want to talk about brains. I, I study brains of um, people that forget a lot, people that have dementia. And um, dementia, I mean, I don't know if you know that, but it's a kind of common disease. We um, have in Germany 1.6 million people with dementia, and that's like 10% of all people that are looking forward to their retirement. So if you're looking forward to your retirement, when you reach that age, of 65, you may have forgotten what you wanted to do. That's a not <laughs> that cool idea, I think. And um, you probably know the most common um, cause of dementia. No? Um, it's Alzheimer's, yeah. So Alzheimer's is um, two-thirds of the dementia cases, Alzheimer's cases, and this disease was discovered by the gentleman, Alois Alzheimer, in this cozy little town um, near to um, Würzburg. Marktbreit called, very nice, very German, sehr deutsch. Vielleicht jetzt ein bisschen deutsch, okay. Also ähm, dann, <lacht> und ähm, was, das war vor 100 Jahren, oder ja ungefähr 1900 war das. Und wir wissen immer noch nicht sehr viel, ziemlich peinlich eigentlich in dem Feld zu forschen, wo man so langsam vorwärts kommt. Ähm, wir alle kennen vielleicht auch Leute, die Alzheimer haben und, und die, wir können auf jeden Fall definieren, welche Symptome oder was wir alle erkennen können von au als Außenstehende. Das sind so die klassischen Vergesslichkeit, dann kommt ähm, Memory Impairment, so a Memory Loss. First you don't know where you put your glasses and then you don't know who's your, the person in bed with you. So it's like, uh, sorry. So this is how it starts or that then ends and then it's usually going downhill. So in the end, um, um, we, have a, we have a problem with, with forgetting and what we all know, but there's also other changes that occur. So for example, there's personality changes, which a lot of people don't know. So um, relatives get upset if the, the people start shouting at them and like inappropriate speech that some, some um, recent politicians, for example, in North America do a lot. Or you have, um, you have sudden outbursts of emotions that are not controllable, sad or bad, uh, sad or good emotions or depression. So now relax a bit because I want to tell you about more details what's going on in the brain with, um, during the disease and also how stress is related with liquids like this and how that is related to Alzheimer's. So if you look at this, oh no, wait, <laughs> we go. Okay, so this way you see um, a very nice human brain, nice and juicy like a fresh walnut. That's how it looks like. And then it's a, we have Alzheimer's brain right next to it, which is a walnut from like um, last, 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 last Christmas probably. I don't know. It's like very brownish and it has like huge wrinkles and huge gaps inside. So this is like the cortical folds we call them. So you have um, a lot of brain substance loss. So a lot of viel, viel um, Gehirnmaterial geht verloren und das kommt, weil Neuronen sterben, so Nervenzellen sterben, neurons are dying, it's not good. And when neurons die, cell material dies, and then you lose substance. When we cut into this brain, that's what we as neuro neurologists and neuropathologists do, you see something like this. So you have like all this brown stuff, which is basically unfunctional clumps of proteins, Eiweiße, Eiweißklumpen. Um, there's two, say, mostly two kinds of clumps. So it's like these huge round things, it's called amyloid plaques. And you have these, these super dense little ones here that are the tangles. That's what I work on, the evil ones. So these guys are basically consisting of a protein called tau. But although it has a beautiful name, I think, it's like a pretty bad guy because what it does, it basically, it can stuff It, in, it aggregates intracellularly in the neurons and it stuffs them like a turkey or for Christmas or a Christmas goose. So, and we can all imagine that this is not cool for a neuron for functioning. If you're stuffed and cannot move anymore, or I mean, they're not moving, but they cannot do other functions. So, and um, I mentioned it's a progressive disease, or did I mention this? I don't know anymore, <laughs> probably. <laughs> anyway, so this is how you start and that's how you end. So. What is interesting about these tangles and 
what we also work on is that they start in a very little area of a brain and then it's like an avalanche. They just go and in the end they are everywhere and kill the neurons. Um, and that is actually where we recently make it, made a very interesting observation and hope that this will bring the field a bit forward to stop them early, to stop early these aggregates from um, propagating. And this has to do with liquids. So liquids, like this beautiful lava lamp, which is mesmerizing, <laughs> which we actually have in the lab to study and observe in moments of quietness. <laughs> but um, this is um, what the cell can use um, during stress, and that brings us back to the stress factor, to actually fight the stress. So a cell um, has mechanisms to fight the stress. One of them is to build little tiny droplets in the... Is it this one? Yeah. Nope. To build um, liquid droplets. So they are liquid, like this lava lamp, in the cell, and they contain a lot of proteins. Special proteins, of course, not everything, and other molecules. And with this... Um, it, they can then, or this is like little bioreactors, so they can manufacture whatever is needed to fight the stress. And then if the stress goes away, you basically have them disappear again. So everything is fine, back to normal. However, what goes, and something goes wrong with these droplets in Alzheimer's disease, and also in other dementia diseases, they turn into a gel. So they get not, they are not liquid, so there's like when you switch off the lava lamp and it gets like ugly and stiff again, and then nothing happens in them. So the molecules that are used to wobble around and function in there, they just clump together or like first stick together and then they form clumps. And that's what we think or what we showed that this can actually for the protein tau, which is in these tangles I showed before, um, lead to an aggregation. An aggregation we define as, a, as an organized way of clumping. So now we have this aggregation and we basically could also show that these little aggregates that come out of a liquid, so a beautiful mechanism that the cell uses, can turn into an avalanche and affect the whole brain. So now you may ask, okay, what can I do to not have these clumps turning evil, or the, the droplets turning evil? So it's basically, we don't know, we work on this, and I hope we are successful, but <laughs> especially to my PhD student in the audience, please. Anyway, so... Um, I can three take home messages, um, eat healthy, so good nutrition, no junk food, no glyphosate and those things. And then do watch your cardiovascular system, so means no smoking and move your butt. And then the third one is probably, I would say, use your brain. So this is, doesn't matter if you like to do Sudoku or talk to friends or read books, that's all using your brain and just do it. And fourth, you should all relax because stress enhances lipid liquid droplets and so easy. Thank you. <laughs>